Now, where are you guys at? Again, a lot of stuff in chapter one, there's some prior knowledge, but uh, don't feel bad if you have to ask a question. And okay? sometimes you, I'll, I'll draw this, you know, like basically, it's not that it's backwards, but it's always taking this one and plugging it into this one. So taking F and plugging into G. Being careful that when you write X minus seven squared, that you um, don't accidentally do some extra no-nos, like try to like distribute the exponent. X minus seven squared, remember, is the same as X minus seven times X minus seven. Now, if you're saying, do I have to do this? It would depend on if the directions say so. In other words, if I have to write my answer in standard form, then, you know, I have to expand it. So if I expand it to get x squared minus 14x plus 49, of course, that would be the same thing as my original x minus 7 squared. Composite of functions, same thing as function composition. Again, this is like the function section, so some stuff we can do with functions. Another stuff that we can do with functions is we can talk about piecewise functions. Piecewise functions. Now, I'll share with you that piecewise functions, they pop up now and then in calculus, and you want to be able to kind of comfortably work with them. A lot of times that means you want to be able to graph them. So this is going to be like a graphing uh, exercise. This is what your exit ticket's going to look like. I'm going to ask you to do a few of these. Now, when you graph a piecewise function, it's kind of like you're graphing pieces of an entire function. So we want to try to think about the entire function. We also want to try to think about the pieces. So what I have here is the function 5, the function x minus 2 squared, and the function just x minus 2. With the following pieces, with the following restrictions. And this is what starts to make this more officially a piecewise function. Okay, the first piece is going to be just x less than 0 x between 0 and 2, and then x greater than 2. My approach with these, and I want it to be your approach as best you can, is to try to not use a calculator, meaning don't just type all this in your calculator and hit graph. If you do that, you're going to end up getting all of the graph. In other words, you're going to end up getting all of 5. But we only want 5 that's less than 0. So it's better to kind of think about that as a piecewise function. Now, when we say 5, remember, that's the same as y equals 5. So y equals 5, of course, is a horizontal line. Now, what I'm trying to present for you here is how you would also do this like in your assignment. In other words, a sketch is okay. But when you draw a horizontal line, of course, draw it horizontally, and then label the endpoints. Okay, so the endpoint here, well, is going to be at 5, specifically 0, 5. And notice that I even made it an open circle so that we can get it all correct that it's not going to equal 0. So since it's not equal to 0, I'm open at that point. Okay, so so far so good. We have a sketch, okay, and we labeled the endpoint y equals x minus 2 squared. Now, you're probably not alone if you're like, I wish I could type that in my calculator. Just be aware, if you type that in your calculator, you're going to see all of it. I'm trying to get you to a point that you, you can do this without a calculator. Some colleges still do that. So what do we know about x minus 2 squared? Well, first of all, something that's squared, we should know, is a parabola. If you're subtracting, that's a shift. Remember talking about shifts? And when you subtract on the inside, it's actually a shift to the right. 
Now, what I'm talking about is the vertex. So we've got a vertex of a parabola, okay? And I'm going to label it as 2, 0 because, you know, I thought about it. So maybe I should label it. Who knows if it ends up being an endpoint. So, okay, I got a, vert oh, a vertex of a parabola. Now, I'm just kind of loosely sketching a parabola. Um, notice that I'm not making it a solid line yet because I don't know what piece of the parabola I'm going to end up with until I start to think about these endpoints. Now, check this out. It's not hard math, but it's really helpful. If you take the endpoint of zero and plug it in, you will actually end up with the x and the y value that goes with zero. So if you plug in zero and you square zero minus two, you get four. Now folks, four, zero, four is actually the end point or maybe the beginning point of this parabola. Now I can start to see a little more about how this parabola is going to connect between the dots. Speaking of the dots, maybe we should plug in, not maybe, but we need to plug in the other endpoint. So we'll plug in two. Now remember, when you plug in X, you get the Y value. You should be realizing that it's already, has already been found. It comes out to be zero. Well, that's the other endpoint. Okay, so what we now have is the ability to connect these dots with a piece of a parabola, a piece of a parabola. I tried to make it a little curvy, okay? It's just a sketch, but it should show that type of contour. Okay, and I labeled the endpoints. X minus two, Y equals X minus two. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, so again, before you just get your calculator out, you should know how to graph y equals x minus 2. You know, it has a, a y-intercept of negative 2. It's got a slope of 1. You start to think about that graph. Now, whether you draw it or not is kind of up to you, but we have a tilted line. This concept of plugging in is very, very helpful. I mean, I almost want to say you need to do that. Now, if you're saying, but I can't plug in 2, you got to understand that this is just going to be the spot where my graph picks up. So I can plug in two and see what's going on, actually get two zero. Now what that means is that my graph is going to pick up where the other one left off. And so this straight line that I'm kind of drawing, now it begins, now my straight line begins, and of course the piece of that line continues to the right. It continues greater than two. probably should get rid of or make sure that it's not uh, emphasized the rest of my graph that wasn't part of the piece. Okay. Now, these two guys right here didn't connect. I know you've seen this before, but that's okay. These two did connect. Okay. Don't assume. Find. Find. Plug in. Plug in X to get your Y value. What if we want to do one of these I guess we could say backwards, okay? In your book, there's a graph. It's on page 15, figure 118. Let's see if we can come up with, let's see if we can come up with the equations for that graph. So it's a figure. It just looks like two little diagonal lines. Okay, if you're like a little frozen, it's okay. That's why we're going over this. This is sometimes a little harder for people, even though I know you've seen it before. So we're trying to write the equations. Now, 
you can always get yourself ready. How do you get yourself ready? I mean, you, know, you can kind of get some space where you're going to fill in some equations. Eventually, we got to do the dirty work here of figuring out how to describe this little line segment. Okay, but it's a line, right? So all lines have slopes. It should be something that you're thinking about. Sometimes the book, you know, it requires you to sort of just look at some points and get your slope. So take advantage of the point one, one, okay? up one over one. It's okay just to look at it and say you went up one and over one. You should be able to say that the slope is one. Maybe you want to make that same statement over here because it's also true. You realize that what we're getting at here is the, the old y equals mx plus b. So we could get a b value by just looking at the graph. Okay, b equals zero. We can just look at it. y equals 1x plus zero, obviously known as y equals x. Now, when I write down x instead of y equals x, that's even a little bit better. Okay, because I already have the y equals. The y equals is this f of x. So when I write down x, that's my equation. You want to make sure you're thinking about the interval. Now, when you do the interval, it's always in terms of x. I can just kind of look at these two circle x values in order to restrict my line. Okay, so I'm going to be between 0 and 1. Now take care of details. It's not equal to one as we have an open circle, but the restriction is definitely part of the answer. How about this guy over here? Y equals MX plus B. Y equals one X plus B. Now, I would imagine that some of you, all of you, can kind of continue this line and maybe you continue this line and you get the y-intercept. But I want to remind you that there's a method that says that if you plug in, you can also solve for the x, excuse me, the y-intercept. Um, plugging in the point 2, 1 works every time. Okay, so we get our y-intercept to be negative 1. Careful, well, not careful, but realize that negative 1 is the y-intercept back here. So our equation is y equals 1x minus 1. Of course, when you fill that into your piecewise function, you can just say x minus 1. Okay, and then when you write your uh, little interval restriction, it's in terms of x. So um, these circled numbers will make up the other part of that. Okay, but they're both equal. Take care of the little details, and you got yourself your piecewise function. When you come back from lunch, um, I'll have two problems for you to do that are like this. You should get them right, but I'm kind of saying, hey, let's get them right. Let's think about it. It's a pretty important idea to finish up this section. Okay, so we kind of officially end the section. And I'll sh again, I'll show you that exit ticket when you return.